my name is Teresita Branco the Ocean Sister and today we're reading Saturn after she cut. This is chapter 10, part 1, from Little Sophia to Aragon. After having such a profitable fiscal year, she cut study was a good time as any to expand. There was plenty of debate on where to move our base of operation. She got eventually settled in Aragon. His reasons for shoes in this city were not too promising. He said, this, ha this city has a large amount of over in poverty. More than 30% of the population is poor or a fallen noble. The guilds are massive and corrupted, and their influence is in fact causing uh, the city to hemorrhage money each year. On top of everything, there is plague and disease. How is that exactly that a good thing? I am shaking my head in disbelief. Master Jean Antoine, if I may speak freely, said Paola. Yes, you may, said Chica, rolling his eye. I have been to Aragon just once, and believe me, you do not want to open business, open shop there. The smell is intolerable, and the people are fed the vestiges of humanity. The rotting carcass of a city is beneath your grace, said Paola, bowing. I do agree with Paola, said Gita. Aragon is successful. Just thinking about going to live there makes my stomach turn. Manure makes good fertilizer, my dear Gita. Trust me, I have a good feeling about Aragon, said Chico, smiling. She got left behind the bulk of his guard. Abby was not in the mood for traveling, so he too stayed behind in little Sophia. My mother traveled along with me while she got to Gita and Paola. Sir Richard was the leader of our armed escort composed of 20 men. Aside from that, there were our 10 craftsmen and 2 designers. She got had decided to leave most of his craftsmen behind since he planned to recruit and train some, some of the local population. The trip towards Aragon was uneventful. She got seemed to have a sixth sense for the danger. We saw her managed to avoid all of the highwaymen. When I asked Chicago about it, he simply said, My friends and I spent a few months as highwaymen, so I know how they think and where they like to hide. Did you kill anyone when you were robbing them? I asked sadly. She got rolled his eyes and then he changed the conversation. He always found it annoying to answer questions about morality or his past criminal behavior. I never once saw him look repentant for the harm he had done. I was not one to join since I was benefiting from Chicot. After traveling for five months, we arrived at Aragon. Aragon was known as the rainiest city in the entire kingdom. It was at the foot of a plateau. Chicot explained that this uh, it was raised straight up, and about its peak there was supposedly a large flat land with people and other cities settling on top of it. It was hard for me to imagine that people could live there above the clouds. The city itself was as dreary as the weather. After passing through five checkpoints, a group slowly made their way towards the flat she got her purchase. This flat was located in the Noble District. Using his paid documentation, she got was able to acquire a noble home. It was frankly a dilapidated apartment. There were rats of all shapes and sizes lurking about. So yeah, there were more than one type of rat. The first thing that she got there was put a special poison around the building to kill the bugs. As for the uh, to kill as for the rats, she got her bought a creepy bluish black colored cat with yellow eyes. For some reason the cat Aegis always gave me the feel that he was mocking me. He was always there grinning whenever I did something foolish. Aegis was a skilled hunter and in less than five days he had already taken care of a rodent problem. It took a month before getting the flat in working order. When a house was presentable, a few of the local nobles started inviting us to have tea to mingle among them. Much to my honest, Chico did not take me so, to such mixers. He said I had the bad habit of asking stupid questions that were in poor taste. In order to keep myself amused, I suggested, he suggested I do a survey of the city in search of new recruits for a workshop. Since Chicago was posing as a novel, he could not appear to have direct connection with his line of production. The first day I ventured outside, I could not get past the first block. The smell of it was nauseating. To help me along, Gita gave me a scented handkerchief to cover my nose. And while I walked, the guards would laugh at me and say, New in the city, or it takes about a month for you to get used to the smell. <laughs> when I feel about first home. <laughs> Remembering the people, remembering the people she got had hired the first time, I went to the slot to survey the situation. The moment I stepped inside, some nasty children stole my hat, my cape, and even my shoes. She got laughed when he saw me how I had returned. He explained, It is because you did not give them any candy. Ha <laughs> ha very 
funny I said angrily. She got drew on me his red ball and then he said, Next time you head out, take this with you. It will make you seem less hostile. Again I tried to enter the bad part of town. This time they stole all but my undergarments. When she got some and returned home, he he laughed again. The others two poked fun at me. While when he could catch his breath, he said, At least you still have your life and what's left for your dignity. Can't you send someone else to explore I want? I send others to explore and they did not have the problems that you're experiencing. There is something about you. You don't look friendly and no one wants to be around somebody with a grumpy expression. And your clothing, they can tell right off the bat that you are not one of them, explained Chica. But I am not like those dingy vagabonds. I do not see why you insist on having me meet with them directly, I said, walking towards my room. She got signed and then he threw me a blanket. He seemed to have expected this turn of events. After I was dressed, he said, I was only trying to help. You seem a bit sad and isolated, and I thought it would do you some good to have contact with real people. Even with the richer and your mother, you, be you barely speak with them. It is unhealthy for you to become too over-dependent on my friendship. I felt the no sensation around my legs, and looking down, I noticed the creepy cat Aegis. And when he got my attention, he's grinned as he's mocking me. I almost, I was almost half tempted to hit the cat, and sending my aggression, Aegis quickly claw his way up to Shikar's shoulder. The cat looked massive in comparison to Shikar's diminutive size. He had not grown much this past eight years, which was odd even by Dwarven standards. Oh yeah, the time, bro? Uh, eight minutes. My train of thought was interrupted when she called said, I want you to take a Aegis and next time you head out, if the cat fails to match your animosity, then I will give up on helping you develop your people skills. I don't want your stupid cat, I said. He's not stupid. I guess it's the only reason our home is not overflowing with rats, said she called. Rat and cute, I guess jumped from Chicago's shoulder to pounce on a rat. Since he was full, he did not eat it. Rather, I just went to bury the rat outside in the garden. He was a well-trained cat. I had to admit as much. The following day, I reluctantly went out with Aegis. Wherever he went, he would have the compulsion to murder the rat. He had enough common sense to bury them as quickly as he killed them. From time to time, he would stop to groom his fur. He would not allow me to pick him up. Still, he always maintained a respectable half a meter distance from me. This time, when I entered the bad part of the city, I was not immediately mugged. A beggar boy selling matches came up to me and asked, Is that your cat? No, he belongs to my boss man, Lord Ginato, and I explained. Oh, I thought he was yours because he keeps following you around, he said. The conversation continued to revolve around Aegis. He drew quite the crowd since cats were not common in the city. They had been in common a few decades ago. However, the current feudal lord had the brilliant idea of killing the cat population to stop the spread of the plague. In the end, the cats were proven innocent and the rodent population exploded and withered the instances of the plague. And since he did not want to admit he was wrong, the feudal lord kept killing cats, uh, continued with his cat killing policy, though he secretly kept some cats in his castle to deal with the rodent population. When an eye saw Aegis, he casually commented, it's illegal to own cats in this city. The cat is not mine, it belongs to my boss, Lord Jean Anto, and I repeat it. Uh, time, bro? Uh, six minutes. Ah, yes, the little lord from Little Sophia. He is certainly quite the conversationalist, and his wife, too, is a darling. They make a cute couple, he said happily. I could feel him smiling beneath his helmet. I am recruiting people for my lord's worship. Do you have any family members that are that have skilled hands, I asked. You know, you're not supposed to ask such a thing overnight, said the knight sternly. He said no was soon quelled when he saw Aegis playing with the ends of his cape. Forgive me if I offended you. I was instructed to ask anyone who was willing to listen. I can vouch that the work will not be sorted. Also, Chicago is the only wor worship master who pays apprentices, I explained. This, was, oh, this always proved to be an irresistible lord for all, who, for all whom I spoke to. Then I was a bit pensive, and while he watched Aegis, I noticed that his armor was lightly rusted. Beneath the fancy coat of arms, I could imperceptibly see that it was falling apart. The knight was not as rich as he was pretending to be. He sent his two sons over to Chica's workshop for a job interview. While walking back, I saw Aegis stop suddenly. The cat meowed his and gave an odd backflip 
before running away in the direction of Chicago's worship. I stared in the direction that the car had been looking at. I walked closer and saw that it was just an empty street with nothing in particular, particular out of the ordinary. I cold sweat fell down my spine and I too was starting to be gripped by the fear that had possessed Aegis. Prudence eventually overcame my curiosity and I practically ran back home. Alright, that's the end of the chapter. Bye bye and God bless.